This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Before we uh, get out of here, I wanted to play the, uh, the audio from your very first match, uh, in the WWF that's going to air on TV, by the way, that match you were talking about, uh, Honolulu, I don't, I don't show, I don't have the records of that match to show who all was on it. I believe you're on it. I know Brett and Owen were on it, uh, yeah. but it's on uh, December 8th. Uh, but that would have been, uh, around the same time that we saw guys working internationally as well. Either way, a lot to unpack here, but I do have, uh, the audio here queued up and I think Sean Michaels is even on commentary. We're going to play it here. From your match against Chris Duffy, you've got a promo involved as well, which is why we're going to go ahead and go to it. Ludwig Borga. He eliminated Satanka from the Survivor Series and dealt a crushing blow. Borga. Ladies and gentlemen, on Monday Night Raw, Tatanka against Ludwig Borga. Against Ludwig Borga. However, WWE fans over in Port Jervis, New York. Chris Looking forward to the Duffy. World Wrestling Federation fundraising event, the funds of which will benefit the Fort Jervis High School Student Council. And on hand, Thursday night, January 6th in Fort Jervis, New York, will be the Undertaker. Well, it's and Dean. Right there. Well, this man is oozes confidence. Yeah, that may not be the only thing he uses. Look at that outfit. Jeff, you have on the stupidest looking outfit of all time. Thank you, Conrad. Appreciate it. I believe it's been described by Eric Bischoff as a dick dancer outfit. I'm colorblind, but I think it's like orange and purple and, uh, got the stripes across the chest and this weird thing dangling from your arm. It's really bad. Awful. Here we go. Jarrett. Well, we know how to spell the name. No question to that. Jeff Jarrett making his debut. Obviously the winner of many spelling bees, and I for one looking forward <laughs> to seeing him show his stuff. Yeah, well, you can do just that after commentary. What's that? That's Stan Lane. Oh, you're it's exactly right. That's exactly who it is. Oh, oh, here's the insert. What does Double J want for Christmas? Well, let's get something straight right from the start. Whatever Double J wants, he takes. Christmas. <laughs> the WWF? I don't think so. The Double JF sounds much, much better to me. Don't you think? <laughs> oh, my goodness. This guy's too much. Drop kick by Jeff Jarrett. And Double J all So you, you didn't quite yet have your, your strut routine like you like it. But this gear that I'm making fun of, that's so awful. Uh, is this something that you and the wife made in the basement as well? It, why do you throw the basement in there? The framing of it. I, I'm, 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 I'm candidly, I'm, I'm, I'm very hurt that Eric would refer to it. No, <laughs> no. So it, as I, again, uh, flamboyance, um, over the top, um, sure. The, the, the whole vibe and, 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 uh, I had worn this in Memphis. Uh, I don't know if it was, I was trying this out. Uh, but when I knew that I was going to be going to the WWF and maybe even before that, cause I was doing some things in Memphis and trying different things. I was always a big believer in character development long before double, you know, cause the King was such a character and the fabs and the rock and roll express and uh dirty Dutch Mantel and the sheep herders and PYTs. I mean, I could go Jimmy Hart, the first family. We were always about characters, always in Memphis. The Moon Dogs. Uh, so I was trying different things, but that, another DDT. Uh, another DDT. But you know, do it right there. The, the 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 five straps in front, three straps in back. It's just a different look, a different vibe. But knowing with the Porter Wagner esque and the over the top singing cowboy. Hang this, on one second. You got the mic again. Wait to see old Double J, and it's the truth. And when I get done with the WWF, I'm going to remake it, baby. And everybody knows what it's going to be called. It's going to be called the Double J. <laughs> Love it. Well, a rather auspicious uh, debut there by Double J. We'll be right back with more. So you had a little promo 
you know, uh, coming in before and after a little bit of mic work, but at the same time, uh, they do give you the little insert treatment. You get the little picture in a picture promo and, uh, you got to do a strut, a modified Fargo strut. I guess we'll talk about that and, uh, show off your, your finishing maneuver, but right in the middle of the match, you rub Duffy's face into the canvas. Not something you see a lot of in that era, but man, that's heat. Everything about you, dude, is hateable. Uh, I see why so many of our listeners, myself included, just hated your freaking guts, dude. My goodness. Um, I loved it. When, when putting it in context, I mean, having a guy talk live outside of Vince or his color commentators uh, just didn't happen in those days. Very, yeah. very few. I just say very few. Not it didn't happen, but um, boy, I was getting the green light because. Um, you know, and I thought about this, uh, not specifically then, but as the years went on, Bruce was such a big part in, uh, giving Vince confidence, like no Vince I've worked with him, no Vince, he could do this or, Hey, why don't we do this? And you know, Vince, I can't stand this guy. He's so detestable, but just that whole character development and Vince seeing it. And then the other agents were always coming up to me and, you know, giving different input and all that. We just really started off, um, God, on the right foot on so many different avenues. Kerwin and his development and and how they were going to shoot things. Just like I said at the top of the episode, it, these were some really fun times. Were you already doing the um, the the Fargo strut in Memphis, or is that something you you brought you borrowed here for the national scene? No, I mean only like at certain times would we like do a high spot with it, but not every week you know, doing a strut here and there, Lawler would do a strut here and there, but you had to have the right heel to tee it up. The heel would have to do something to you and, and he would do some kind of goofy strut or some type of mocking. It was the whole setup. So I had touched on it, uh, often, but not regular. Like, like I knew that I was going to insert into this character because the strut, and again, I grew up, Jackie Fargo's was, you know, uh, I love Lawler, but, but I was, got the opportunity to be around him. Fargo was like my childhood idol. Let's, uh, let's go to your Monday night raw debut. Again, this is two days after superstars. Uh, Stan Lane was on commentary there. Sean Michaels is actually the guest commentator for Monday night raw. I got those backwards, but let's take a listen to your Monday night raw debut here. Two days later, December 20th, 1993. Let my family save your family some cash. You don't need perfect credit. You don't need money out of your pocket, but we will save you money. It's not a matter if, it's a matter of how much. Save with Conrad.com. Back here he comes on his way. Double J. This contest is scheduled for one fall. Coming down the aisle from Music City. You Take a look if you want. What a most Well, no, not exactly. Although I did see one once on Michael Jackson. Or was it LaToya? I'm not really sure. You can hardly tell either one of parts. Uh, I guess maybe the British So, a very young PJ Walker with hair there. Uh, <laughs> so, this is the, the match that was actually taped first, but it's going to air two days after. Oh, and you're on the mic again. Tennessee, there must be something wrong with the way he sings. Unable to get a break in Music City, USA. Oh, come on, come on, come on. And now, this man claims he's going to use the World Wrestling Federation to catapult himself to stardom and then go back to Nashville. First of all, the country and Western industry is so crooked right now. They got Double J right under their nose and they don't want to use him. Why? They're jealous. I can understand what he's going through. What do you know about country and western music, John Michaels? I'm from Texas. Yeah, you're, you're from Texas, all right. Country and western. All the way. So uh, you've got your, your white outfit on here, and you had some fur on your shoulders, and you got fringe on your legs. This is quite a look here. 
your referee for this first match here against, uh, what's who's going to become just incredible. PJ Walker is, uh, Gino's son. And, uh, man, he left oh, he it way, way, way too soon, but it, here you are on Monday night raw and you heard the, uh, the iconic introduction from Howard Finkel. Is that one of those little moments where you realize as a kid who grew up watching WrestleMania and SummerSlam, man, Howard Finkel saying my name, I made it. I used to love it at the garden or Meadowlands or wherever Howard was at just iconic. Um, he'd always joke with me, double J, what are you weighing these night tonight? And just as a joke, you know, but, uh, yeah, me and Fink hit it off from day, literally from day one. He was so kind to me. Uh, you know, in those days he would watch the tapes of Memphis. He was the guy in the office that sort of aggregated what was going on in promotions outside of, um, of, of the current, uh, scene in WWF. So Howard knew of my work, uh, and was so complimentary. Was the plan to always start the the show and end the show with you on the mic? You mean the match? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes, they, 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 again, the, the Vince McMahon and, and the mindset of personal branding and ingraining the character and the spelling of the name. And it, like you said, it's detestable. They hated it. People hated it. Here's a guy spelling his own name over and over and over. Not a lot to like, like about that, but yes, that was sort of the, um, and in, in, in house shows, or excuse me, in, in live events, uh, I would elaborate even further, but always talk before and after. You can call them house shows here on the podcast. We know what you mean. <laughs> I do. I was giving you. Uh, tell me up about the transition from the DDT to the figure four. Do you remember when you made that move? No. And, and I don't even remember exactly why, uh, other than, um, you know, I don't know if anybody was using the DDT and the DDT, a lot of times you, the, the opponent has to take it right. Um, but, uh, getting into a submission and I don't know if that, I just don't recall like what was Vince had to approve it, but I don't know if it was a, a an agent or me or connection or whatever it may be. The first time I see you win with that based on my research is wrestling challenge. It's a taping on April 28th in Springfield mass. And you just recently said, I remember talking to Vince in Springfield, hmm. picked up a win over a win over Mike Davis in a minute and 55 seconds. And you won with the figure four during the bout is when doing the clown would cut an insert promo on you. Uh, so yeah, the figure four, the first time I see you win with it on TV or at all that I can see is, uh, is there interesting hey hey it's conrad thompson thanks for checking out the podcast here on youtube be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you can notice anytime we upload some new content and go save yourself some money right now if you're in a fund of your loan or you have credit card debt it's not a matter of if i can save you money it's a matter of how much find out right now for free at savewithconrad.com